Okay, so today I want to talk to you about dynamic range and the number of stops of dynamic range that your camera sensor has. Now, I don't want to go too deeply into dynamic range on this video because I'm going to be producing a series of videos all about exposure, dynamic range and subject brightness range. I've got just about all the tools I need to do to actually produce the videos. I've just got to sort of lay it out. And anyway, but today, dynamic range. Now, if your camera is manufactured by Nikon, you can go over to Nikon's website and you can trawl all over Nikon's website for your camera or any other camera that they make. And you will not find Nikon quoting a dynamic range for their cameras. If your camera is manufactured by Canon, we can say exactly the same thing. They do not stick their necks on the block by quoting dynamic ranges. Now then, where does everybody get their information from? All these people on YouTube, oh, I've been out and I bought Nick on this or Canon that, because it's got a huge dynamic range. Yeah, people who say that haven't got a bloody clue what they're talking about. Not a clue. And all they're doing is taking their information. If you're lucky, they're taking their information from a third-party website, such as DxOMark, or they're actually quoting figures and values from some other idiot who's actually taking their information from the likes of DxOMark. Now, we're going to test here a Nikon D800D. People say to me, Andy, why haven't you upgraded to a D850? Answer, I don't need to. D800 is as good today as it was the day I obtained it. So, you know, it's good enough then, it's good enough now. But that's beside the point. Here we are on DxO Mark for the D800E. And DxO Mark's measurement for the dynamic range at ISO 100 set on the camera is 14.33 stops. Or 14.33 EV. That is just rubbish. It is nowhere near 14.33 stops of dynamic range. If we go over to photons to photos, oh, we can look at the camera tested by them, and they come up with a photographic dynamic range value of 11.45 stops at ISO 100. Again, that is rubbish, because there is a difference between these dynamic ranges that photons to photos and DxO Mark come up with, and what we might term as photographers usable dynamic range. And what I'm going to do is show you a very quick method uh, for you to actually find out the usable dynamic range of your camera. This is something you can do very easily, very simply, on a rainy Sunday afternoon, and you don't have to move any further than where your computer is. Okay, so what we're going to do is open up Photoshop, and we're going to go to File, and we're going to go New. And what I want you to do is just create a document, and in this instance 1920 by 1420, it's 72 dots per inch, it doesn't really matter. And I want you to create it with a white background. It doesn't matter whether it's 8-bit or 16-bit. doesn't matter what profile it's in. White is white is white is white is white. So we'll go create. And then what we want to do is to blow it up and then hit the F key twice. And then we've got this white screen. Now what I want you to do is either put a diffuser um, rather like a um, that piece of white acrylic or white perspex that I showed you in a previous video uh, that I use for shooting flat field frames with uh, my cameras. Or you could use a flat field frame filter if you've got one. You could actually even get away with using one of those crazy white balance filters if you've got one of those and screw it over the front of your lens. All you're looking to do is to use a piece of white diffuser material that is smooth. Don't try and use a piece of um, um, flash diffuser material off the front of a softbox. You just want a smooth diffusion material that you can lay over your screen. 
okay um, in this instance I'm going to use a 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens on the Nikon D800E and I'm going to focus it at infinity yeah so I'm not trying to pick up any of the individual um, pixels on the screen and uh, the diffuser is basically just to scramble the light coming off the um, sent off the uh, monitor because of the viewing angle disparity between the actual pixel array on the screen and um, the angle of uh, view of the lens. I'm going to take pictures of this screen with the front element of the lens as close to the diffuser screen as I can possibly get without actually putting any pressure on the front of the monitor. In one third stop increments, all the way from 30 seconds to one eight thousandth of a second. So I'm just gonna take ISO 100 F8 shots at various shutter speeds from 30 seconds all the way through to an eight thousandth of a second. And then when you've done that, I want you to go and import the raw files into Lightroom and we can go from there and here we are in Lightroom and you can see I've got exposures all the way from 30 seconds through to one eight thousandth of a second so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the first one 30 seconds and we're going to take it into the develop module and we're going to make sure our clipping indicators are turned on by hitting the J key. So we've got our shadow and our highlight clipping indicators here. You can see the highlight indicator is active, but now we've pressed the J key, we've got the little white boxes around the actual clipping indicators themselves. And so highlight clipping by default is red and shadow clipping is by default blue. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna scroll through these images. So that's a 30 second exposure here we are one third of a stop less so i can't remember what that is what is it 25 seconds something like that and so that's one third of an exposure one third of a stop exposure shorter two thirds of a stop shorter a stop shorter so that's 15 seconds and what we're looking for is the first shot where we have no red clipping indication and so we'll keep going and here we can see we are clipped in the middle but we're unclipped along the corners and the very margins of the actual frame the white area here is due to the natural vignetting of the lens so what we want is, is another third of a stop shorter exposure and now you can see we've got no clipping so what I want you to do is hit the figure one and that will actually put a single star on that particular frame. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to continue to scroll through the images one at a time, just stepping through them until we come to the dark images. And what we're looking for is images where we start to show shadow clipping okay so that's the blue now because the lens naturally vignettes you can see the dark clipping is only in the corners or so you'd think if we actually blow the image up to a hundred percent and look at the center you can see we've got an awful lot of clipping in the shadows now when the likes of dxo mark test cameras they think that, well, because we can lift shadows and we can recover shadows and we can recover blacks, we can make that clipping go away. So this shot, this particular frame, would actually be included within the acceptable dynamic range of the sensor. I've got a bit of news for you. All this recovery malarkey is not really good for your images not really now that's going to upset an awful lot of people isn't it yes it is and you know what all those people who get upset and disagree with me are idiots because they are just plain wrong 
if we were shooting on film, yes, I know we're not shooting on film anymore, but if we were shooting on film, we had to get the exposure right all the time because you can't unclip shadows because if you were shooting on negative film, shadows will be completely see-through, transparent. There will be no detail there at all. Same with highlights. Highlights will be completely choked up black on negative film. And if, if you don't matter how long you stood there burning those highlights in, black is black is black, you wouldn't be able to get any detail out of them. And if you think of that in reverse, you go to colour transparency film, colour slide film, and really and truly, we need to treat digital sensors and digital photography very much akin to the way we used to treat slide film. So just keeping well away from recovery of any sort because you basically you can't recover highlights yeah you can recover detail out of shadows because but it gets noisy gets full of false colors gets full of all sorts of nasty artifacts so yeah even though dxo mark and photons to photos will call that usable dynamic range and don't get me wrong it is usable dynamic range if you're working for the police and doing surveillance work but if you're wanting to hang pictures in a gallery it's of no yet that sort of recoverable detail is about as much use to you as a chocolate teapot or a hole in the bloody head so what we need to do because we've got this image blown up to full size don't forget if we take it back to a fit to screen view we can't actually see any clipping but now we've got it up and we're looking in the center portion of the uh, actual image let's make sure we are smack in the middle and then what we need to do is to step back the other way step left until we don't see any clipping and so we've still got clipping there we've still got some clipped blue speculars there well, they're not speculars, are they? But you know what I mean. And, you know, I mean, yeah, we could take that. But I always like to go one step further and be a little tiny bit on the conservative side. And so, if you do that and then put another star, or hit the figure one, and then we've marked the dark end of the range of, ex you know, acceptable what is an acceptable black if we actually step back one we didn't have any clipping on this but if we actually look at the rgb values in the histogram that's 0 0.7 0 0.8 rgb and if we switch out to lab values yeah it's 0 0.4 believe you me that is blocked it's still blocked so if we come and step back one to the left we're on 0 0.6 yeah we've got a little bit of a histogram going but it's the histogram is not actually changing um, between these two that's a third of a stop smaller and if you look at the histogram and then we step back one it's not changing step back two we get a slight change so the actual usable dynamic range is somewhere between here and here in its shadow end in the dark tones end so all we need to do now is to step back let's be generous if you like and let's count off so we've got stepping left one two three four five six seven eight nine 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. There's seven stops. 22, 23, 24. There's eight stops. 25, 26. We've got eight and two thirds stops around about of dynamic range on the center of this Nikon D800E. That's, my, that's a, a way of getting a ballpark figure a reality check on your camera and if i just pull up this there is the actual dynamic range of the d800e with this self same lens at 100 iso and that's being measured correctly using test charts and calibration inside Sekonic 
data transfer software and you can see here that in Lightroom I was saying eight and a third to eight and two thirds stops dynamic range and there we go according to Sekonix data software or DTS transfer software we've actually got eight and a third stops of dynamic range so this is the calibrated method of doing it and this is the common sense way of doing it so there you go i know this video is going to upset a lot of people and i don't care because if you're upset you're too stuck in your ways you're quite happy to take other people's word for it go and find out yourself put up or shut up okay so there you go hope you found that useful guys quick way to get a reality check on the usable dynamic range of your camera Ooh, i'm going to stick my head well down under the parapet put my tin hat on and get under the kitchen table because i reckon people are going to go potty at this but anyway if you like it just give me a thumbs up welcome your comments down below and uh, i shall see you very soon Toodoo.